All right, Mike, I want to do a little buy or sell for uh, – we'll do some players and then we'll do some teams. Buy or sell, so anything you want to say about each guy, quick quick word. Uh, Kyler Murray, two, two, what, they're three and two? Yeah, buy. buy. You're buying Kyler yeah. Murray. You, you believe yeah. in everything with him. Yeah, I, he's got he's got the special skills that I was talking about earlier to make something happen if the play that's called doesn't work. His running ability is off the charts. I'd like to see the, the Arizona offense be a little more diverse, a little less predictable, maybe line up under center once in a while, although he literally would be under center. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. But two, I don't like the running plays out of shotgun all the time. I like the running back to get ahead of steam. So I, I buy Kyler Murray. I just think they need to work on their offense. What about my mortal enemy, DK Metcalf? Oh, DK Metcalf, bye. I mean, this guy's Calvin Johnson and Jerry Rice combined, and he's starting to Mike, become aware of Mike, it. Mike, come what? on. Calvin Johnson, you just listed the two best wide receivers of all time. <laughs> he's becoming a come hybrid. On. He is. I, I say he's like T.O., yeah. But 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 it's it's fascinating to watch someone who is becoming fully aware of what he can do. And you could sense that when he caught the game-winning touchdown pass yeah. on Sunday night. He's like, throw me the damn ball. I'm going to catch it. There's no doubt about it. I'm going to go win this game single-handedly. So he's developing more and more confidence. And, yeah, he's only going to get better and better. All right. How about my guy, uh, Jonathan Taylor, on the Colts, Wisconsin Badger? Yeah, you know, he really got overused at Wisconsin, and I wonder how that's going to affect his NFL career. He started off great, kind of like Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Started off great, Elaire. and so we get this narrative that, hey, these guys are great, these guys are awesome, but then you look at the numbers, and it's like, well, it's it's okay, it's not awesome, it's not horrible, but it's just kind of steady, and I, I think he's got potential to be really, really good. He's got a great personality. We interviewed him at the Combine. I thought he was just a fantastic kind of guy, great for the Colts, I don't know about Phillip Rivers as the quarterback. I think that may be the bigger problem there. But I think Taylor's got the potential. I just worry about how much – you because you only got so much tread on the tires, and he used up a lot of it at Wisconsin. Um, Odell yeah. Beckham, he went home today. I don't know if it was pink eye or toxic shock or whatever it was. I saw your tweet. He is uh, – <laughs> yeah. So he, he went home, but he's been playing well the last couple of weeks. You buying or selling? Well, I, I'm buying as long as he's buying. As long as he understands his role and as long as he doesn't get frustrated or demonstrative about not getting the ball. Kevin Stefanski told me after they beat the Cowboys that he challenges himself to get the ball to Odell Beckham Jr. earlier in games. Now, I think this past weekend against the Colts, he ended up being a decoy, and it worked. This weekend against the Steelers, will he be a decoy? Will he get him the ball early? They've been getting him involved in the running game with Nick Chubb out. He had that great run against the Cowboys. It helped that nobody on the Cowboys wanted to – you know, chase him and tackle him. But I, I I think that as long as as it doesn't become a thing regarding how often he does or doesn't get the ball, because that kind of took over the team last year, they've gotten away from that. I say bye as long as he's comfortable with his role and doesn't get frustrated by the fact that he's not getting the ball as much as he'd like to have it. So I was wrong with this guy. I'm, I'm wondering what you think. Uh, we all kind of thought he was washed up. Jimmy Graham, Chicago Bears. How Are you buying or selling Jimmy Graham? Yeah, I mean, I'm buying in the role that, that he's he's made for, which is red zone. And, uh, you know, third down, you need a third and five conversion. He's a guy that can go get the ball. He's not going to run down the field like he used to. He's not going to have gigantic numbers. But, yeah, it, it always pissed me off when he was traded to Seattle. And we started hearing complaints from people with the Seahawks that he's not blocking. Well, that's not what he does. He never was a blocker. Why are you trying to make him into a blocker? Why are you trying to make him into a complete tight end? Accept what he is. He's a basketball player on a football field. Put him out there in the red zone. Throw the ball high. Either he's going to catch it or no one's going to catch it. And use him in those moments where you, you need to benefit from a big body, a guy with good hands who can go get the football. So, yeah, I'm buying Jimmy Graham. And it's great to see him kind of have this recovery after being on a couple of teams that didn't know how to quite use it. That's mm -hmm. what the Seahawks do, though. They just they take everybody who can't block and then put them in a position to, like, turn them into yes. – Like, with their offensive line. That's basically what Tom Cable did for, like, six years. Uh, what about – here's kind of a dark horse. I think nobody – I, nobody in our league owns him, but I think he's like owned in maybe 15% of fantasy football leagues. Uh, James Robinson, the running back for the Jaguars. Jaguars. James Robinson is awesome. Illinois State, undrafted, Roll showed points. up for training camp only. No offseason program. Fourth guy on the depth chart when he walked through the door. And he immediately wowed Jay Gruden, the new offensive coordinator. They believed in him. They've been validated every week. Now, I think his numbers weren't awesome this past weekend. But, yeah, this guy is just like nobody knows who he is because the Jaguars 
aren't any good. And it's a shame what's happening with the Jaguars. They beat the Colts week one. And then they did you did you guys talk about the fact that they made history by being the first team ever to lose four straight games to previously winless teams? But they're no. the first team to ever do that, to lose four weeks in a row to previously winless teams. Uh, now this week they get the Lions who aren't winless. But I, I just feel like it's circling the drain in Jacksonville, and that's a shame because I think the reset button is going to get pressed there. And I know how you guys feel about Doug Marone, but if they don't turn it around quickly, you got to worry about Shad Khan, you know, uh, twirling the, the end of that mustache one day and saying, hey, Doug, hey, Dave Caldwell, hit the road. Not yeah. Doug's fault, though. Not we we want to be on the record. Not Doug's fault. All right, last one, buy or sell uh, in the wide receiver running back flex position, Justin Jefferson. Don't don't give me this wide receiver running back flex position. What I know you where you're going. Why? I, I, I just, I, I know, I know. Listen, come on. What are you talking about? I, I, we actually even, have him. Even, what? Even though you haven't had me on the show for a while, right? I still remember what you typically try to do. I'm not commenting wait, on anyone. Wait, in the we try to get you to talk tradition. about your fantasy team? Yeah, like yeah. we just went down your entire roster. You didn't go down my entire Yeah, roster. we did. That's why Tyler you, that, Murray, that's Jordan Taylor, or Jonathan Taylor, James Robinson, Odell Beckham, DK Metcalf, Jimmy Graham, Justin Jefferson, Bucker Rams, uh, on your bench you have Herbert, McCaffrey, McKinnon, and McLaurin. Wait a minute. How do you have that information? <laughs> we got sources, Mike. Uh, we, five uh, and oh, Mike. You're uh, buying your whole team. I, know, I can't believe that it. That was funny. Like every player that we said, <laughs> Mike was a hard buy on, and it's because <gasps> it's because he's personally to, invested in it. You know what? You didn't think <laughs> I was gonna get smarter, Mike. I had to get smarter. I didn't mention that I have Robinson on my fantasy Nobody team. Nobody cares about your fantasy team. No one cares. No one cares about your team, Mike. No I cares I about your team, Mike. The minefield. <laughs> now I need to know who. Now, now, now I'm, I'm coming. The, the call is coming from within the barn, Mike. Yeah, my kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Did you get my kid working against me? Of course we did. Come on. Oh, wow. That's well beautiful. You got it. I well mean, done. how else was I going to get you? How else were we going to get you? He's got. He's got a hell of a poker face too. Because I talked to him right before I came down here, and he <laughs> let on nothing. We just got you to talk about every single player on your fantasy team without you realizing yeah. it. Yeah. But, and you know what? You wasted 20 minutes of your podcast to do it. No, so that was the best 20 minutes spent. <laughs> that was the best 20 minutes spent. You're 5-0, and oh, though. Why didn't you say that? Because nobody cares. <laughs> I'm actually nine and one if you factor in the oh, other. Oh, no okay. one cares. No, no one cares. He Wait. said. He said the quote was, "He's five and zero, oh and he's very proud of his team this year." <laughs> yeah, because look, I'm in a no-win proposition with any fantasy league I do because I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. So if I lose, everybody thinks it's the greatest day of their life, and if I win, I'm like, "What the hell? The guy's supposed to win." So uh, yeah, I don't know why I even do it. <laughs> I do like how, how you gave every one of those players what? like an A-plus grade. Well, what am I going to say? I ain't so DK Jimmy Metcalf, Graham. He's DK Metcalf, his pride. A, a combination you know, of Jerry should, Rice and Calvin Johnson. When, when, you went, when you went Jimmy Graham, I should have realized what was going on. Oh, God. It's like, who cares? I mean, I mean, yeah, Jimmy Graham's had some decent games, but, I mean, it's who not cares? like he's tearing yeah. up the league. He's not Robert Tonyan or anything. James Robinson well, is the next Walter Payton in your mind. That's what you gave him a A combination of Walter game. Payton and Barry, John, or Barry Sanders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Important to specify. All right. Final question brought to you by Cross Country Mortgage, America's crazy good mortgage company. Go to ccmlens.com slash take to learn more about your future home, buying experience, or refi uh, refinancing needs, equal housing opportunity. What uh, about what about Le'Veon Bell? <laughs> Serious not question. Not on your team. Not on your team. Serious no, question. No, no, no. Was, I tried. I tried. He's already claimed. There was a report um, <laughs> that it was like the Chiefs and then four mystery teams out there. Well, Chiefs, Bills, and Dolphins – where the report from ESPN.com, and you know, people who do this for a living get, get upset when we speculate on sources, but Jeremy Fowler, who reported it, covered the Steelers for years, and he's talked to Bell in the past. He's reported on things Bell said to him. I think Bell told him those are the three teams. The question I have, are the Patriots lurking here? Because the thing about the Patriots, they will tell you and your agent, if they're interested, if it gets out that they're interested, they're done, that's it. We're out. That's why when it came out, remember that Leonard Fournette had interest from the Patriots right before he signed with the Buccaneers? I never believed that because you never hear that a team is interested in the Patriots. They either sign him or they don't. And if you ever do hear they're interested, it's either a lie or somebody just blew up their own opportunity by running their mouth. So it's possible that Bell also is walking around with the possibility of joining the Patriots. We have a story at PFT, the real PFT, not you, Whoa. where we've, we've got the – commenter. 
Okay, and that's good. Where, where uh, they have quotes, we've had quotes from Bill Belichick gushing about Le'Veon Bell in the past. It would not shock me if the Patriots get in on this, especially if they're faced with the possibility of Bell signing with the Dolphins or the Bills. So I'd say Chief Bills Dolphins don't rule out the Patriots, and I have a feeling he's going to sign somewhere sooner rather than later. Um, all right, my last question, Mike, is uh, we're a quarter of the way through the season, a little more than a quarter of the way through the season. Give us your championship game in Super Bowl. We'll give you a second chance. Yeah, look, I, I don't like to change my first guess until the teams have either become mathematically eliminated when it comes to making the playoffs or have lost in the playoffs. I picked Buccaneers Patriots because I just think it would be an awesome story if Tom Brady and Bill Belichick went against each other in Tampa for Super Bowl 55. They're both still alive, even though one's two and two and the other's three and two. I'm not giving up on it yet. So I'm sticking with that until one or both of them can't make it. Give us a backup, though. Give us a backup. Chiefs Seahawks. I think that's the obvious one, isn't it? Although so the you problem just, with the Chiefs Perfect. Is, you just gave us your AFC, NFC championship games and Super Bowl. Well, but I mean, here's the thing. The Chiefs are susceptible to crap in the bed if they're not fully focused on the team they're playing. Yeah. I mean, look, they almost lost to the Chargers. The, the Patriots without Cam Newton, it was sluggish. They lose to the Raiders. But then here come the Ravens, and what do they do? They go in there and they pulverize them. I think they're going to destroy the Bills on Monday night. They are vulnerable when they're playing the teams that, that they're supposed to beat, and they need to figure out how to fix that and not lose to those teams because there's only one bye week available this year in either conference. You want to get that one seed, and if they screw around, they're going to blow it. Um, one last question for me on the coaching carousel. Give us, give us some names, maybe a couple dark horse head coaches that might get picked up this offseason, whether it's you know the, the Texans or the Falcons or any other team that might be looking, who's a name that we haven't really talked about that much that is going to be like involved in the conversation later on? Are you trying to get me to say Jeff Fisher? No, Greg Schiano no. was the one I was hoping for, but Jeff Fisher will work. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's, it's so premature at this point. They don't even know who they're going to be talking to. I mean, you know, Eric Bieniemy's name is at the top of a list and the, the, in, in bright lights blaring. When you look at what he continues to do with that Chiefs offense, I think the Texans definitely should take a look at him because he could do with Deshaun Watson what they've done in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes. With the Falcons, I just don't know what they're going to do. And you know, Arthur Blank made it clear that uh, you know, there's no commitment to Matt Ryan. There's no commitment really to anyone on the roster. They're going to try to hold the roster together until they have the new GM and the new head coach. And whoever it is is going to decide what's going to happen with those guys. But there could be major changes. You know, I almost feel like they're not going to get over 28 to 3 in Atlanta until everyone who was connected to it in any way is gone. And it may be that, that they need to move on from Ryan and Julio Jones and a few others who are still on the roster to finally exercise that demon from a few years ago. Or they bring in Josh McDaniels and have a constant reminder that on their own sideline. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, and let me say this. Let me say this. I, I think that it's smart – for these teams, and, and I know this is something that Coach Dungy would disagree with because he thinks defensive coaches should get equal consideration as offensive coaches. But, you know, what happens is you hire a defensive coach. He hires an offensive coordinator. The offensive coordinator ends up doing really well, and then he leaves, and you've got to replace him. And then you set back your program. So just hire the offensive coordinator. Now, the Browns did that with Freddie Kitchens, and it didn't work out. But why not hire the offensive guy? Because the offense is what's making the game go. Look at all the points being scored now. You need an offensive mastermind. So I hope both of these teams uh, think, think very seriously about going on the offensive side of the ball. Because if your team turns out being great, like, like the Falcons did, they lost Kyle Shanahan to the 49ers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mike, this has been great. Thank you so much. We missed you. We're happy that you went through your team with us. Next, next time you come on, we'll go through your other team. It'll be great. Is, is, is the fact that you haven't invited me back in a year simply because you couldn't think of a better way to fool me? No, to this took me like – I, I thought of this in like 20 minutes. So, no, that's right. not – So, it's other reasons. Yeah, it's I've the coronavirus stuck. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad – Really, it really no, is. No, 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 no stop. Oh, no. This thing, we, we well, used to I don't know. Well, no, we used we to have you on know. on Sundays. So what did I do? Is there an odor I'm unaware of? We used to have you on on Sundays, and now Deion Sanders is on every Sunday night recapping because he works with us. So that was your sweet spot. We have less guests now. We don't do the get. We don't do a traditional guest on Monday uh, show. So anymore. next season, when Dion's coaching Jackson State, is that what it is? Yes. Yep. 
Yeah, when he's coaching Jackson State, that's when I'll hear from you again. Yeah, exactly. Yes, when he, when big t- when prime time becomes too big time for us, then mm-hmm. we go to Mike. You know, Walter Florida. Payton went to Jackson State. Yes, yes. Since we mentioned Walter Payton earlier, because James, James Robinson, Robinson is how I, is what Payton. I call him. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. the next Walter Payton. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thanks, Mike. <laughs>